guys and girls and welcome to episode 124 of the f reality podcast this is a weekly vr ar and mr talk show live streamed every saturday on youtube facebook and on twitch this is all made possible by using restream.io you can also catch the show live in vr by using big screen tv the show goes live at 7 p.m in europe 6 p.m. in the UK and 12 midday in Central US. You can also check out the audio version, which is available on iTunes, SoundCloud, and on Spotify. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback during the show, please put them in the chat. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can. Now, of course, it's time for me to introduce you to the team. First up, this guy's living the VR dream, dipping his toes into many VR ponds that VR has to offer. He absolutely loves it when he's live. It's, of course... Zim Talk Five, how you doing, man? You're right. You're like you're like a DJ. You always make that rhyme. I'm good. I'm good, Mike. Um, it's been a good, solid week. I have been doing lots of tinkering and playing around with various bits and pieces, working on my little VR streamer website, and um, generally just having a good time. I've had a good run of it of three, four months now, like not being sick or whatever. My kids are a little bit ill at the moment, so I'm like. They're like, you know, I've got the hex curses. I've got the sage around the corners of my door. They got to stay out. This is a containment area. I'm not getting sick. <laughs> it might still be winter in Scotland, but feck it, I'm staying in my studio. So you're keeping the kids in quarantine? Yeah, well, more like me in quarantine, the rest of the world <laughs> outside. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. Nice. Well, glad to hear that you're uh, you're on a little bit of a streak. I like it. Nice. Yeah, feels good. Yeah, uh, if, if it gets any better, I'll be streaking properly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we look forward to that. 100 likes now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next up, this guy loves nothing more than to explore the vast lands of the metaverse, all whilst cosplaying as a jacked up Pikachu. Toss a coin to your doctor. It's the rowdy guy. How you doing, dude? You are right? Yeah, now, that is an introduction. Like, <laughs> holy <laughs> act, a jacked up Pikachu? Yeah, sign me up. Yeah, for sure. No, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Uh, for people who don't know uh, what that is all about, uh, I'll probably explain it a little bit later on. Uh, why Mike is referring to me as a jacked up Pikachu? Um, I got my reasons. I got my reasons. I'm yeah. very puzzled, actually. I'm, I'm very curious at this answer now. But yeah, Mike, I gotta say, whenever whenever Mike's not around and I've had the opportunity to host, um, the only piece that makes me in any way nervous is that intro. Cause you do the, the, the like matching people with names so well, you do a great job and you change it every week. So yeah. congrats to that. I hope someone someday pieces all of that together 
because it yeah. would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we've done it now for so many, like, cover years now. It's so weird. But it's weird, though. Like, even though we've done this show so many times, like, I always get that little bit nervous just before we go live. Like, as you're doing it, like, you don't know this. Obviously, you can't see this because you don't see it when the stream goes live. But Zim does this, like, countdown when we're going to go live. And it always, like, bubbles up in my chest. I can always feel the nerves. But um, it's, it's maybe also because it's so complicated. Like, every time something oh, yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But as soon as we're live, of course, you know, it's just always a blast chatting with you guys. So, uh, so yeah. Um, Nathy, of course, Nathy's, of course, away uh, in China uh, again this week. Uh, he's been visiting loads of cool VR companies. He's been visiting uh, Catwalk VR, HTC, Pimax, amongst many others. Um, and he'll be back next week to tell us all about it on the 25th of January. So make sure you stay tuned for that episode. It's going to be a really interesting one. Uh, if you don't know who I am, uh, my name is Mike, uh, host of the show from Virtual Reality Oasis. Uh, we've got a great show for you today. Some of the highlights. By the way, by the way before, sure. before you start, you're not just Mike. You're Mike who recently got 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. So I, I, th I think that deserves a little bit of a round of applause for uh, yeah. all the work that you've put in there. Uh, so put your hands together. Yeah, thank you very much, man. Thank you very much. It's, kind of like, it, it, it's, it's strange, you know, like uh, surpassing 100K is like a six months ago. And then it just kind of snowballed from there, really. So, um, yeah, it's great. Nice spike over Christmas. Obviously, a lot of interest in the quest. So that yeah, kind of helped out sure. the channel a lot. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's really strange. And especially when I talk to people about it, because you don't really think about like the real world consequences of what you're doing because you're just sitting in your house making stuff that you would do anyway <laughs> if no one was watching it. Um, and then when you go to events like Oculus Connect and you meet people, it, it's really, really surreal. Um, yeah. But yeah, still the kind still, of impact that you have. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's very strange to see that firsthand. Uh, absolutely. But, um, you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. Absolutely loving it right now. Um, and just on the, 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 after passing 200K, I'm actually taking my first holiday. Yay! <laughs> Um, which will be the first time in two years I've had a break. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I'll come nice. back even stronger the following week with even more VR content. So yeah, I really appreciate you guys uh, giving me a, a shout out. I, I, I'm actually more glad that you're saying you're taking a holiday than anything, Mike, because if for, 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 for being close as I have been to you throughout this transition period, from you being very small growing to very large, um, it, it's like you are a workaholic. And even when you're on holiday or you're on site or whatever, you're the fellow who doesn't take a break and you always do the thing that, you know, is the right move, you know, and, uh, you know, you're obviously doing well for that. And I appreciate that. And I'm glad you're taking a break because the, the yeah. last thing any of us want to see is, is burnout. And, you know, I think oh, yeah. it's hit it's hit everybody at some stage in their in their careers. So, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, Smart. we're going away. Um, we're also going to be looking at a puppy as well, which I'm super excited <gasps> about. Oh, um, yeah, we haven't had a dog in our lives for a little while, so uh, getting a new pup is a, a really exciting part of my life right now. Um, sure. So looking forward to that and just taking some time off. Yeah. So we so. actually get a podcast puppy. This is possibly going yeah. to bring. <laughs> possibly, it's going to bring yeah. all the boys to the yard. Exactly. We just put it in the thumbnails and we've got some viral videos on our hands, boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you very much for the little shout out. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, like I said, we've got a great show for you today. Some of the highlights include we have some sad news about Left 4 Dead VR. I know Zim's going to be really upset about this. Don't tell me this, right. Mike. I saw it. I saw it. I haven't seen anything about it, so it's actually news to me. I don't want to know. Oh, God. I, I don't want to know. I feel terrible to be the one that's going to break your heart. Um, we also have uh, the top 10 Oculus Quest games available on SideQuest right now. Uh, Zim's going to give you the lowdown on the latest releases to look forward to next week and has something special prepared for us, for us in the form of a quiz where we're going to be using Slido uh, again, which we used on uh, that episode where we did like a little uh, interactive element. So make sure you get Slido ready for that later on. And then finally, we're going to be uh, talking about working out in VR and how to track your calories burned using a free app called Your. Uh, but first up, Let's find out what everyone's been up to this week, their highlight of the week. And uh, first up to the plate is Zim. What have you been up to, dude? Highlights. Um, actually, it I'm going to reflect on something that we talked about on the podcast probably nine months ago, um, mm -hmm. which was which was the first, I think it's a world first called um, Remote Reality. You guys remember me talking about this, uh, this game where you drive robots in another country? And yeah, yeah. And seeing as seeing as Rowdy uh, correctly recommended that I watch the Chernobyl series, which I watched on Amazon Prime, and that was fantastic, I figured, why not go for a spin in Chernobyl? 
which is what I just did. So there's this little, um, little, it's probably the size of like half a warehouse scale, uh, scale model of Chernobyl. And what you do is through a web app um, at isotopium.com, I think, uh, you go to the Isotopium Chernobyl game, you pay a fiver basically for 60 minutes of energy for your little robot, you're remote connecting, and with WASD or the arrow keys, you're controlling a robot, and you have an onboard laser sight, you have a flashlight, essentially, to flood, it's like a floodlight in front of you, you have mechanical arms that if you were to fall, you know, fall if your robot falls over, you can get yourself back up, most people use it as like a hand wavy gesture, um, and there's actually an admin who's running around in like a little green tank, um, and there, there are actually, I didn't see any, uh, but there are actually people administering it as well. So they might, you might even see a person step into this. So it's like one sixth the scale or something like that. It's very cool. And the servers have been offline for quite a while. Um, and I got a message from the devs today and they're like, hey, we're just putting it up for today. So if anyone's interested, uh, you can go to isotopium.com and actually if you register your email, they actually give you two minutes free so you can connect and see what the latency is like and drive a robot around. It's cool. You even have guns, so you can shoot other robots. So I, I was on with a couple of buddies, we're like driving around. There's a lot of great verticality to it. And the point of the game is that you're trying to collect isotopes. So the whole kind of story behind Chernobyl, for those who don't know, you know, radioactive uh, explosion. We had a radi you know, radiation all over Chernobyl, unfortunately making it un unhospitable. And so I think in this anyway, you're collecting that with this kind of remote robot. But I got to say, latency wise, it's almost indiscernible latency. Uh, wow. And I, I would have thought there's definitely gonna be like 230, 300 millisecond lag. No, that that robot moves pretty instantly. And the coolest part is there's like a um, an overlay. So you like go up to like a little pod that you see glowing. And again, this is a real world robot you're driving. I think it's in Germany where they have it set up. It's not actually in Chernobyl. That would screw with the signal. I'm sure Rowdy could talk more about that, <laughs> uh, about the effect of gamma radiation on on Wi-Fi and all that. Um, but your robot can traverse this landscape and there's all kinds of stuff. It's like a post-apocalyptic landscape and, and you're just running around with this robot. Um, the controls are pretty good. The only thing that I think I missed about the whole thing, being a VR nut, is like, I wish they had a 180 or 360 degree camera on the top. So instead of like being in fixed view and having to pivot, um, that you would be able to just like look around or at mm. minimum, you know, turn your head and kind of virtually move a camera that had a wider field of view. So that's what I, that's the highlight of my week because it's kind of a different flavor of reality. And again, we don't talk mixed reality or other flavors of this that often. And for me, I'm kind of, I like the whole rainbow, like virtual reality is fantastic right now, but there's other stuff still coming at us, I'm sure, like augmented reality. And this is something that I'd never done before. And I think it's, it's really fun. It's actually really that, good. That sounds like a really neat concept. I'd never even heard of it before. Yeah. Um, but, you know, having just watched Chernobyl as well uh, and really enjoyed the TV show, highly <laughs> recommended, by the way, um, that, yeah, it's really interesting because they did actually try to use robots, didn't they, to try and help yeah. uh, with the, uh, the reactor explosion. Uh, I won't spoil anything. Um, so yeah, that's really interesting that you can do that and remotely control a robot halfway it's, across the world. It's mad, and and the thing is that like you, you're literally like I, I was Twitch streaming it, and um, people were coming in. They're like, wait, wait, what? This is this isn't just a game. This is real. These are real robots. Like it was blowing people's minds. <laughs> I could tell because I hadn't planned it. They just kind of went live, and uh, it was growing very fast. People watching, and I was like, this is just compelling. The, the only thing I'd say is the level itself is like in the hour. I think I toured it. And I was like, satisfied with that. Would I do another hour? Probably not. Okay. Um, but it definitely was worth the asking price of five quid, or I guess it'd be like seven dollars uh, for an hour's worth of play uh, with a few other people on the level, yeah. uh, which was which was awesome. It'll run across other people. You can gun other people down, team up with your friends, race. We raced, and uh, Buck drove me into a wall, bastard. Um, <laughs> That's awesome though. Like, what do you do this week? Yeah, I remotely controlled a robot from the other side of the world. And it's yeah. it's going to be live until the end of today, I understand. So if anyone else, because they're not, you otherwise you have to schedule and like people mm -hmm. buy time. And then when there's enough people queued up, they would bring the server live or, the, you know, they have someone attending to it. So I'd recommend if anyone wants to give it a go, um, as I said, you get a free two minutes anyway. And it's worth trying just to see what it's like. 
So. Nice, nice, unique nice. recommendation there. Yeah. yeah, awesome. What about you then, Rowdy? What have you been up to with your jacked up? Yeah, a, a quick update. <laughs> Apparently, the, the the first part of uh, of the intro got uh, missing some th somewhere on YouTube. Uh, I don't know why it was playing on the other platforms, but for some reason on YouTube it was not. Uh, it was only showing the intro uh, screen. Uh, but I think it's been resolved now, and everything is working. And uh, the chat has confirmed that as well. Oh, cool. Now. Uh, what I played, I'll first go over what the chat played real quick, since I asked the question as well. Uh, I see that Water UK played Assetto Corsa, Lone Echo, Gorn, and Red Dead Redemption 2, all on Link. Wow. What does Link mean? Uh, Oculus Oculus Link. Link. Oh, on, the, on, the, on the Link cable, Red Dead <laughs> yeah. Redemption 2? Zelda's boyfriend, by the way, also. Yeah, because remember, I think he posted uh, a couple of weeks back that he was playing Red Dead in VR using Vorpex. Oh, yep. wow. Yep. That's awesome. I've seen some people playing The Witcher uh, on Vorpax. I was wow. like, oh, my days. <laughs> Trying to go on a horse on that one. It's like... <laughs> um, then Dr. Ingrish, he has been playing Hyper Dash on the Quest, and he said it's really good. Uh, Copperfield also comes with a recommendation for us to say, you guys need to check out Hyper Dash. It's currently in alpha, and it's an addictive arena-style shooter. Uh, also, Aileen Kara has also been playing Hyper Dash. Dave the Psycho has played a Half-Life, the regular one, <laughs> not Alex, Fail Factory, National Geographic, and Until You Fall. I've never played National Geographic, but that sounds like an interesting one. Yeah. Um, and then... That's a good one. That's actually a good one. Yeah? Yeah. It's the one where you're kayaking on ice and stuff, and you take pictures, and then you go climbing. They've kind of got a little bit of the climb in there. It's, it's proper good. And I think they did an extension nice. on it recently. So. Yeah. And then still we had a graying geek John. He has been playing the climb. Drop that on Quest. And then I'll read a few on the Facebook chat as well. Mm. It's Steve Ridley that played Gorn on the HC5. Pat Bokikio. I'm sorry if I just raped your name. He has played VR Sports Channels and Steve Ridley also punched the ceiling. That's kind of nice. Uh, and I myself, I went into VR chat for this week. Uh, it's been a very long time since I've uh, last been into VR chat. It, it's always like a little bit of mixed bag that game for me, you know, there's like a lot of great content in there, but there's also a lot of like content that you wish you wouldn't <laughs> have ever seen uh, that is in there. But I, I did it a bit more in a controlled environment. I, I invited Chris and also a wacky cast and uh, I am crusty and also user idiot. We all went in there uh, basically together and we just messed around with like a lot of stuff. We found some avatars from uh, The Witcher. Uh, Chris had some avatars from Pokemon, hence the jacked Pikachu, which uh -huh. basically looks just plain hilarious. It's like a really, really buff guy, but completely yellow with a tail and he has like the Pikachu hat on there. It's, it's, it, it... <laughs> <laughs> Even thinking about it makes me like makes me weird. His butt is so well shaped. Oh my anyway. god! No, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, but yeah, like VR chat, it's like uh, if, if you get a good group in there, and you know you're a little bit in like a bit more of a controlled environment, it can actually be like a really solid and good experience. Also. The amount of avatars that are in there, there's a lot of custom avatars that you can bring in yourself. And they've made that process like a lot easier to do it. But you also have um, a lot of like perfectly rigged characters that are already in there. So the mouths move, the eyes move, the hands like they, they move exactly how. Um, you can do some really plain weird shit in that, in that kind of stuff. But you can also do a lot of fun stuff with that. Um, also, certain characters have like different kind of scenes attached to them. Like for example, Wacky Cass, he played like uh, Tyrion from uh, uh, the Game of Thrones for a little while. So he had this like uh, this like a little outfit on, and he had a few scenes that he could set up. And one of the scenes was that he would like hide in a crate, and if you push the button, the crate would like burst open, and he would like fall out. It was just like a plain scene, but you could use it on like the most hilarious kind of moments and. Another scene that he had as well was uh, he had a little scooter which kept on singing the song like Space Pants, Space Pants. <laughs> and he would like use it at like the most random kind of points. Um, we had a little like trial going on in, in VR chat. So Chris was the judge, I was a lawyer, Wacky was the one who was on trial. And we just had like a lot of fun. People actually came to the trial to go and attend it uh, since he wanted to see, you know, what kind of punishment he would receive. It was. Um, it was a very strange experience, but uh, a, a lot of fun. I, I think we spent a good three hours almost in there, uh, mm -hmm. just you know messing around. Are you doing, feeling doing... okay now, Rowdy? Are you? Oh yeah, still I, feeling I, complete. I, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling like a Jack Pikachu. 
the, the funny thing for me, like you should go and check out Rowdy's video, it is really funny. The funny thing for me was when the trial started and they invited in the defendant, who was Tyrion Lannister, and then he comes sc scooting in on a, on a little Razor scooter with sunglasses on, with like this cosmic dust flying behind him, playing this song called Space Pants, and it just had me in stitches. So I yeah, highly recommend going and checking hilarious. out that clip. Um, but yeah, VR chat, like you said, can be a bit of a mixed bag sometimes, but um, at least you're going to have some sort of unique experience when you go in there, that's for, for sure, sure. For sure. There's so much, there's also like, um, like if, if you say that you don't get motion sick, go into VR chat and I'm telling you, you will eventually get motion sick because there are certain, and I don't know why that is the case or like how they do it, but there are certain scenes that are rigged to a certain character that can actually change your own field of view. So if wow. you if you look at a character like that, it will it will start messing with your field of view. For example, we'll start zooming in. There's like for example, Chris played that um, that guy from Zo Zoidberg from uh, Futurama. Yeah. And if you would do a certain pose with those like his clamps, then your field of view, no matter where you looked, it would zoom in onto him the entire oh time. Oh my god. Walk away. You could try to watch away, but it wouldn't work as long as you were in nearest field of view. That's, That's so crazy. Weird. It would it would mess. And he had he had different ones as well. Where one with like emoticons that would just like start like coming out of your out of your eyes like emotion, 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 and it was just like go all over the place. And then Chris like would stand in the middle of the thing. It's um, it's that that's a that's a challenge. They have roller coasters that you can like be forced into. Um, it's uh, it's it's. It's extreme. It's it can yeah. be very rough if you yeah. want it to be. Wow. That sounds awesome fun, though, <laughs> even though it does sound uh, extreme. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this week, um, I played uh, Path of the Warrior. And this was after last week because, you know, uh, Jason Bradbury was on the show. Uh, Jason and Rowdy were kind of talking about it, and it kind of got me really interested in trying it out myself. And, th and this week I was testing out um, the official Oculus Link cable uh, and I thought, well, as I'm going to be testing the cable out anyway, mm -hmm. I might as well check out this game. So I played it a lot. Uh, I'm actually right up until the very last level now. Um, oh, wow. I haven't started the last level yet, uh, but it's probably taken me about two hours so far to get where I am, uh, yeah. to get to the last stage. Um, but like you guys mentioned on last week's show, it's like essentially Double Dragon or Streets of Rage in VR. Um, and the funny thing is, when you first boot up the game, it's got the most hilarious 80s retro soundtrack yeah. that like kind of goes, Path of the Warrior. <laughs> it's like really <laughs> cheesy, but it's like really like, uh, like it just gets into your head and then you're singing it for the rest of the day then. It sets the mood, right? Exactly. exactly. For a split so second there, I thought we were going to get another serenade from Mike. No. 100 I, I likes. 100 <laughs> likes. Sadly, I don't know the rest of the words. It's the only bit that I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I take that on uh, loop for eight hours, Mike. Is all I'm saying. Well, it, it might happen. You never know. Um, but like you guys mentioned on on the last week's show, you know, punching is is, is like as you would expect it. You know, the faces contort really well when you punch someone in the face, but the kicking is hilarious because you use a button to actually kick, and then like your foot just kind of slides into your your field of view and just whacks them in the face, which is really fun. Um, I did think the special moves were a bit lacking. I thought they could have been better. So for example, like I really wanted, because of the 80s sort of retro vibe, I really wanted to be able to do like a street fighter, like Hadouken or something, like with some like uh, yeah, gesture yeah. based move. I think that would have been really cool. It's um, not in there? It's not in there, no. Yeah. You do have a variety of special moves, but they're all a bit, well, they're, they're, all, they're all right, but that would have been much more fun. Or like raining down like lightning on enemies would have been really cool as well. Um, I think the game is ideal for short, bursts and just kind of having a bit of fun like 20 minutes half an hour at a time maybe clearing one stage at a time because I, after playing it for like an hour and a half straight i did find it got repetitive just with like Probably. different enemy skins yeah. um although i will say the boss fights are varied and they are a lot of fun and they all have unique yeah. mechanics for the boss fights so i would give them credit for that for sure mm. um and it's now but, also in co-op now. Yeah, I was going to say that exactly. Yeah, the the developers Twisted Pixel they released an update this week, um, adding co-op mode support, which is also crossplay. So you can play co-op mode uh, with someone on Quest or someone on Rift. And That's I thought, cool. well, that might be an ideal little stream idea for Zim uh, and his good lady, as they like to do a sort of couple streams now. I was already planning to do it, but my wife said she didn't like it because when she was in, um, uh, was it Creed or? I was going to pipe up and mention this because um, she just doesn't like the kind of upfront punching someone. Do you okay. know, like, the first time you're ever in VR, for me it was, like, looking down the barrel of a gun. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, this is weird, right? Like, your brain mm -hmm. is, like, telling you, don't do that. 
I think she's at that stage with punching people in VR where it's like, mm. you know, there's something almost ingrained in you that says don't do it. So I had that with uh, with hover junkers. It'll take some time. Really, with hover junkers. Um, yeah, the speed of it. The first one that I tried that had a gun in there, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, had the guns. wow, yeah. Nice. I, I wonder with the... Um the co-op mode if the difficulty scales because if it's the same difficulty then it might be just a bit too easy i think uh, so hopefully it scales uh, the difficulty with two players but i haven't tried it out myself yeah yet. and i hope there's kind of like i wonder if there's like a setting for that again as i said maybe i'll butter her up and eventually we'll get to mm. doing that i'd really like to because um that kind of thing it kind of makes you feel good let's like oh i can be the protector and you can be behind me or whatever and i'll i'll do the punching you know i'm sure Raddy would uh, yeah. do that as well also, just to give you my uh, conclusion on um, the official Oculus Link cable, uh, which I mentioned on last week's show, I've been testing it a lot this week and uh, tested it with like other third-party cables as well. Um, I would say that the official cable, although it is expensive, it's worth the money in my opinion. Um, it might be unique to my situation that I think it's worth the money, but all the other cables that I tested wouldn't plug into the USB port on the front of my PC case. Wouldn't work mm. for some reason. I've had that work- problem. Yeah, whereas the official cable does, um, so, and the build quality is better. It is actually really flexible for a fiber optic cable, oh. more flexible than the copper cables, uh, the other third party cables. Um, and you've got the clip that sort of tidies it away nicely onto the headset. So okay. for me, I understand it's expensive. And, you know, if you want to go for a cheaper option, that's absolutely fine. For me personally, I would say it's worth the investment. And, but of course, that's all sub. And, you know. and how much is the, is the price difference? Like the, yeah, it's the, a lot. So to, to put it in pers- to perspective, like you could you could make an eight meter cable using uh, a cable creations extension cable and the anchor one that Oculus originally recommended, yeah. and that would cost you like forty quid, whereas this is like more than twice the amount and it's a five meter cable, but it is lighter, it is more flexible, and like I say, it it's convenient for me because it plugs into the front of my PC, which makes a big difference. So that's the reason why I'm going to be using that one going forward. But, you know, there's plenty of options out there. So regardless of, you know, what your budget is or what your priorities are in a cable, there's plenty of options out there for you. But I thought I'd give you my little uh, takeaway of that. Um, Cool. So let's get into the news then. Got quite a bit of news this week. Um, The first bit of news, which is quite interesting. Uh, I didn't really hear about this anywhere else, uh, but I just kind of saw it. Uh, upload uh, made an article about it and then I checked the Oculus website and confirmed it Uh, but the Oculus Go has had a permanent price drop Uh, and this is pretty neat the 32 gigabyte model of the headset has now been permanently dropped to 149 US dollars 139 British pounds which I think is an amazing price for that headset you know, what do you guys think about this? Uh, 32 gig is actually totally fine. It's it's mm. the same thing with the Quest, where the lower end model is is actually grand. Like you're not, you're, especially on Quest. Uh, sorry, especially on Go, you're not gonna fill that thing up. I don't think in a year worth of gaming, yeah. even if you're yeah. like, you know, playing a title a week. I think you're you're still gonna have room. So, and as a media consumption device, I love that headset. It's my go-to for poker. It's my go-to for adult stuff it's my go-to for netflix when i just want to lie in bed if you're sick lying in bed or in a hospital bed and you can just get to a, a an internet source or whatever tether off your phone or something it's perfect it's really yeah. great what adult stuff sim what adult? you know like mathematics uh heavy oh. arithmetic mostly yeah yeah okay noted noted um the 64 gigabyte model uh, if you're interested is 199 us dollars 189 british pounds and if you really wanted to like load it up with like all your movie movie library for example and take that on your travels with you then we'd maybe recommend that one but like zim said the 32 gigabyte is is plenty for just games out of curiosity um and i, I haven't tested this myself are you not able to uh, do some um expansion via the usb port on the device I don't, I don't know. think so. I don't yeah. think so. I'm not sure that's been ever confirmed, but like, you know, with things like I, I recently upda- upgraded my Switch with like a micro SD card, mm. that's so handy. And I was just like hoping that maybe software wise Oculus had enabled it since its launch. I yeah. haven't seen that confirmed. Chat, if you know for a fact that that's uh, working, tell us. I've got a feeling there's a workaround, but I don't think there's an official way of doing it. Sure. That, yeah. That's my feeling. Um, and like you, you know, although I appreciate you use yours, I don't use mine now. I've got the Quest. Mm. Um, but with that said, my in-laws use it, which is weird. Mm. Um, and prior to them going on a trip to Russia recently, they were using the Go with the app called Wonder to walk the streets of Moscow in Google Street View yep. and get wow. a feel for the place before they went on holiday there, which I, which I thought was awesome. Um, so amazing. I actually, I actually did, did that to get, a, to get a feel of the place, to so like yeah. know 
It wow. I've done that as yeah. well. I've done. I've even done that here. I did. I did it for a walk in. Um, I had a, like a big dental appointment in Glasgow. Walk the streets in VR. You remember all the turns and everything so much easier than looking at a map. Yeah, it, it yeah, works it's so great. Cool. It's like it's like they were there. Um, yeah, there's also a fun game you can play with a spouse or a friend uh, mm -hmm. in Wander. Is you just you could there's a randomizer and it basically works like Google Maps and mm -hmm. you you basically randomly teleport yourself and up to four people, sorry, total of four people, to a random place, and it's guess this place. And the first person to guess the right country, you know, or close in, closest country wins. That's a fun little game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. Brush up on your geography. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, like, you know, if you, like Zim said, if you want a media device, sit there and consume media without the distractions of the real world around you. It's a great little headset, especially for your first headset as well, if you're, you're sort of dipping your toes into VR for the first time. Yeah. Like, you know, there's so many like these VR headset viewers or cheap VR headsets on, in the stores yeah. that I would I'd avoid all of them at all costs. And, and really the Go is probably the, the cheapest headset that I would recommend. The panel is great. I think the yes. number one caveat all this time for me is the battery on the device you're going to have to charge it the day you want to use it, is yeah. what I'm going to say. Because yeah. it doesn't hold its battery like the Quest, not nearly as well. It's still my number one gripe. I wish they could engineer that out and they'd make the Go much more friendly. Um, and I think it's also perfect for planes. It's really, yeah. it's a great travel companion. Fits in a tiny little, you know, carrying case. And Oculus do have a carrying case for that as well. Um, yeah. I like it a lot. I know, I know there's a lot of naysayers on Go, but I think as a portable gaming device, it's also great for kids. It's fantastic for kids. You throw them in bait. It's fantastic for the elderly as well. You know, mm -hmm. grandpa, grandma having, a, having to go a, in it's bait. Like, like, it's not the kind of headset you, that you would recommend to a heavy gamer, but it's no. a kind of headset that has a specific purpose and a specific audience, I think. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, absolutely. I think the real shame is that Oculus turned off Oculus Rooms because that was a reason, I think, to own that, a Go. Yeah, I don't get that. I don't get that at all. Yeah, that was that was really good. They yeah. should have implemented that system in all of uh, Oculus Homes. I, w I could have understood that if Horizon was like launching the week after they disabled it. No. But to disable it so early when, it, again, like having the poker apps, like it's one of the number one social draws. When I was away in California, not this year, but last year, my wife and I got together and we played. It wasn't Parcheesi. What's the one? Othello or something with the yeah. with the black and white. Yeah like chess pieces um and that was great fun it's a great way to stay connected with somebody who you care about three thousand miles away i think i think although we praise it and we loved it it i maybe feel i feel like we were the only ones that knew about it do you know what i mean like it, yeah. it didn't have that wide reception and i think had people known about it more they would have used it more because it was fantastic the, the like the voice quality was insanely insanely good yeah. uh, and being yeah. able to jump off from that into a game together Again, no, like, that's, that's a great still concept. the best kind of experience that I've had in a, in a social kind of way. Yeah. Is the way that the Oculus Go. But you remember that, Mike? When I think it was you, me, Nathy. Yeah. Uh, the fourth person as well. I don't even remember. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, how we like launched that that one game all together from Nathy's room. Yeah, uh, exactly. Just, and, and the character came out of the wall because that's how we how we imagine it you know if, if you watch like ready player one or something like that yeah. that's kind of what happens you know you you launch a game while you're already into the into the virtual world and yeah. you, you're not it's not like an interface you're really interacting with it's more like you actually pick up a cartridge you put that into a, a, a console a character comes out of that console and then brings you to the game and that yeah. kind of experience was really was and really watching cool. youtube together works that way well as well so you can like watch content sitting on a virtual couch and it's like super handy but i'll bet you that i bet you you're right mike in terms of the footfall i bet you the footfall was pretty low and oculus just mm -hmm. said the price of running you know global international services here's the bill here's the, here's what we've got yeah not a business uh, sensible decision to keep it online yeah, hopefully they snowball all of that into Horizon so it's got all yeah. that functionality at launch. I really hope so yeah. uh, because it was really great despite there being a low user base. But now we've got the user base in Quest. It's a shame that that doesn't exist on Quest right now. Yeah. But um, that is the Oculus Go, uh, permanently price dropped. So if you're looking for your first VR headset, it's not a bad headset, although it is limited with three degrees of freedom movement. So just be aware of that. Yeah. Uh, but a great entry, uh, entry point for sure. Um, Next bit of news this week is about Iron Man VR on the PSVR, because oh. sadly, the release of the game is being delayed. So initially, it was going to release on the 28th of February. Now it's going to be releasing on the 15th of March. So, Well, I mean, there's a, 
in a way that is a bad thing but in a way that's for me also a little bit positive because in, mm -hmm. in the beginning when i saw like the first trailer i was a bit like yeah I, i'm not entirely sure about this game but uh because nati was fairly positive about it when he tried that iron man yeah. experience uh that it's being delayed does mean in my opinion i think that um they're working on like some more stuff than rather than if it was just like a simple like shoot them up then it would be probably like uh, just launching uh, yeah but it means that they have something in mind i, I heard yeah. very positive things about people not just nathy who's tested it but people who um have tested this otherwise and i i suppose it makes makes me kind of very interested in it just for the mechanics over everything else because i'm not really a comic book guy and the marvel and dc stuff for me is kind of like i can take it or leave it um but if they get the mechanics down solid especially on PlayStation. Mm -hmm. We've already seen they've been able to hit it out of the park. So it's not a huge delay. It's no, no. And they did state on Twitter, this is what they said. Uh, this is from the team at Camouflage. Uh, in order to deliver on our vision and meet the high expectations of our amazing community, we've made the difficult decision to move Marvel's Iron Man VR to a May 15th release. We truly appreciate your patience and understanding. You'll be hearing from us again soon. So okay. like you say, a couple of extra weeks, not that bad. Nah. Um, and, and hopefully, like you guys said, you know, putting the Iron Man suit on, stepping into the toes of Tony Stark uh, will hopefully be worth the wait. Uh, it's definitely one of my most anticipated VR titles coming out this year. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, a great studio. Camouflage's stuff that I've played before. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, Playable uh, also on Go. Republic. Republic. That's the one. Republic yeah. is still, and it's very, it's a very long game, kind of like stealthy, like... Um, uh, who's the guy I'm thinking of? A uh, Metal Gear Solid, like mm -hmm. Solid Snake. That style of game in VR, it works great. So if you have a go and you haven't checked that Republic yet, you'll look at the price and go, that's a bit steep. It's not. Take my advice. That's a good game. Is it also available on Quest now? It is. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I'm go. not sure if they brought it over as a Go title port or if it's right. direct. I did launch it once, but I can't remember which one it is. Sorry. Mike. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, it seems like a lot of games have been uh, delayed just recently. A lot of announcements. We've had like Cyberpunk, Final Fantasy uh, for a couple of examples. Let's just all pray right now that Half-Life Alex doesn't get delayed. Please don't do this to me, Valve. Like, don't. I'd be okay with a delay. It's okay, no, Gabe. No. It's okay. <laughs> don't break my heart, please. Just give me Left 4 Dead, okay? Just give me Left 4 Dead instead. Well, that kind of brings us on nicely to our next topic. <laughs> don't you do this, Mike. Yeah, so, so so Gabe, don't break my heart with uh, a delay in Half Life, but I think we're about to watch Zim's heart break. So uh, hold your focus, focus, camera on, focus on Zim. Focus on Zim camera. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. So whilst we're on the subject of Valve, let's talk about Left 4 Dead VR. So Tyler McVicker, the lad that we know from uh, the Valve News Network, he's been talking about a Left 4 Dead in VR for forever now, pretty much. Uh, and he sort of suggested that it's going to be the second flagship VR game after Half-Life Alex. And to be fair, this is something that we all wanted, particularly Zim, as <laughs> Left 4 Dead in VR would be incredible. Let's be honest about it. It would be amazing. Mm. However, this week, Valve themselves provided an official statement about the rumors to IGN. And it reads this. We've seen rumors to this effect for the last couple of months. We did briefly explore some Left 4 Dead next-gen opportunities a few years ago, but we are absolutely not working on anything Left 4 Dead related now, and haven't for years. It's clear some people are having fun creating misinformation to spin up the community and other outlets. Unfortunately, for now, a new Left 4 Dead game is not something we're working on. Hearts, truly. Official? I thought it working. was going to be rumor! <laughs> <Back> <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, this is from Valve directly to IGN. That's crushing. Yeah. That is honestly it, crushing. That is honestly crushing. I'm ah. Oh. It is because you know Tyler, bless his heart, he's been putting out a lot of uh, stuff, you know, about Left 4 Dead, you know, a sequel for Left 4 Dead, you know, sequel for Half Life for a long, long time. Like it's a staple of his channel, to be fair to the guy. Um, and sometimes his stuff comes out true. Sometimes it comes out false. I think this is just one of those ones that, unfortunately. Is, uh, is not true. And it seems like Valve are, are particularly pointing the finger at sources like him because he started this kind of wildfire off uh, by saying that it was going to happen uh, and talking about it. Uh, so unless it's a troll from Valve, which I highly doubt, then it seems like we won't be getting an official Left 4 Dead game in VR anytime soon, which I can feel your pains in. I think it's a real shame as well. Uh, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, you know how they say there's like a silver lining? Any dev who's got the capability to pull off a Left 4 Dead and keep it somewhat genuine to the original principles of the original game, i.e. not go 
too crazy in terms of graphics, graphic fidelity, focus on core gameplay, AI director, pathing, cooperative team play, low HUD. Just start working now, please. <laughs> well, we do have a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, and that is that Vertigo Games are working on After the Fall, which is probably the most similar to Left 4 Dead that's coming out soon, but they do need to do a lot more work on it from what I played at Gamescom because it's way too arcadey yeah. and needs to up the realism and the simulation a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, Rowdy and I got to play an early build of that at their offices, yeah. um, and it's like, you know when you know something is a bit too arcade? It's like, yeah, yeah and it doesn't really tap that kind of sim or immersive side. It's That's going to be the difficulty. And I think that with some other games, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the show, you probably already get better than that this month, you know, in another package. Um, I don't know. We'll have a, maybe a chat about that later, but... Uh, uh, let me let me just, like, make some more silver lining here. Like, please. am I correct to understand that Valve is not making a new Half-Life, uh, um, a new Left 4 Dead VR game? They just said they're not working on Left 4 Dead at all. At all. At all. So there's also no possibility of a VR remake of a certain Left 4 Dead. <laughs> I don't think so. Thank, thank you, Rowdy. That's not silver lining. That's a silver <laughs> bullet, you bastard. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no, I think... I think I'm going to cry live on stream now. I think by making this statement, they do really want to just draw a line under this and say, look, it's not happening. Don't get your hopes up. Which is fair play to them, you know, that rather than to leave us all hanging in the hope that this might happen. But, you know, that we know that they're working on two other flagship titles for VR. Maybe they're going to be new IPs. Maybe it's going to be Portal. Who knows? But um, sadly, it seems like it's not going to be Left 4 Dead. Look, and that's okay. I don't think rehashes is the only way we should go forward. VR is a completely new medium. Maybe the thing with De with with Valve is what they do, just like they with the original um, Left 4 Dead, they like, they like cardboard box it, you know, uh, they prototype it and then they just play and they're like, whoa, we have staff staying in the office on the weekends just to play the prototype. Then we know we've got an amazing game. Um, if they've done that with something else, I will just as happily welcome new IP, but I hope mm -hmm. they can, you know, do the things that Valve do really well make performance fantastic, give mm -hmm. us something that someone else hasn't already done, and deliver it in a timely package that's ready when it's ready. Uh, yeah. uh, we got the David Psycho saying, maybe it's uh, what about Left to Die? <laughs> well, it, to be fair, like, you know, although it's not in VR, Turtle Rock, who made Left 4 Dead, are yeah. working on like a spiritual sequel to it. It's called Back for Blood, but, and that's going to be releasing this year. So we do have that, but it's not in VR, of course. Yeah, so exactly. Just, there's still there's still still two Valve titles that need to be announced, right? Yeah, exactly. So we don't know what they are. If it's not Left for Dead, then it, does do it ha does it have to be a new IP then? It could be. It could be. It could be Portal then. Still, that's still yeah. an old IP. Yeah. It could be Dota. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I honestly yeah. wouldn't be surprised if they did Dota because no one has really cornered. We talked about this. The RTS market. Yeah. And 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 like although we're not massive fans of it, like it is like globally like. I've played, I've played quite a bit of Dota. Yeah? I've, I've played yeah. quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, okay. Nice. <laughs> I don't play that, but I play a lot of Smite. So, like, I like MOBAs. I think that, I do think they would work in VR. I do. You guys ever played League, then? Uh, a little I bit. Never, once, but it was my kind of thing. Same For me, here. like, when, when I watch these eSports shows about, like, League, I get really excited about it, and then I look at it like a drug. Like, it's like, I look at it, it's like taking heroin for the first time. Like, you, you, you try that, you are hooked for life. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not that, that so good. I, 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 I'm it's scared good, of it but, in that sense. But, yeah, when you, when you look at the eSports section and the crazy money and, and the viewership, yeah. It's yeah. been dominating on Twitch for how many years now? God, eight yeah. years or something? Crazy. As if I need, as if I need another distraction in my life. <laughs> Just do some Says work. Says the Mike. man Jesus. who's getting a puppy. Anyway, yeah, I'm not no, even yeah, gonna true. go there. <laughs> yeah, let's not. Okay, let's move on. So, next bit of news is something that I found this morning on Reddit. Actually, it blew my mind. Uh, and if you're watching the video stream, you have the benefit of seeing the video for reference uh, because it, this is a visual thing. You really want to see this to believe it. Uh, but for our audio listeners, I'll try my best to describe it as best as I can. I'm going to suspensefully just hold the video for an extra five seconds. Go on. Okay, cool. Um, so a guy has mapped out his apartment one-to-one -one in VR and then recorded a little walkthrough of his like apartment interacting with various elements and he's posted it on youtube it then got shared from youtube and then went on reddit it went crazy viral on reddit and i shared it on twitter this morning and people are really loving the twitter post as well um 
but it looks like he's using an Oculus Quest uh, with the Oculus Quest hand tracking feature and he's interacting with virtual items around his house and he's done this amazing side by side view so you can see the real world and the virtual world what he's seeing um, so for example he's got a dining room table in front of him uh, that he's touching with his hand and in, in VR it's like a Google Maps view that he's like swiping and interacting with the map in real time and then he gets up, walks over to his keyboard where there's a real life like music keyboard and a virtual keyboard, which he can then touch the keys with his hand with like virtual sheet music above it. Uh, and then he walks over to his like living room area, sits down on his couch, uh, which is mapped exactly where his virtual couch is, puts on the TV and then there is big screen TV there. So you can watch whatever you want in big screen TV within VR. And I just thought it was such a like an incredible tech demo to show uh, like what the future could be like if we're if we've got this ability to scan our own environments right like um, i don't even know how to call that that's like is it's it's not really like augmented reality but it kind of is you know it's because it's mirror reality is what i would call it ah uh, okay yeah mirror, that actually mirror, makes reality. Sense. mirror reality mirror reality that's a good way of phrasing it yeah the proper it, mr <laughs> and it, yeah. it's interesting that you mentioned that it's ar because it is ar but yeah. in VR, but it's the best AR I've ever seen, but it happens to be using a VR headset. <laughs> exactly. It, it's so incredible. Yeah. Uh, and hats off to the and, guy. And we, we talked to like a couple of weeks ago, like, you know, I think both Zim and me said, uh, it would be awesome to get like a work environment into the virtual yes. world yes. that you can like interact with. And, and things like this, like just show the potential of that. Of, like, just imagine that you you can like spice up your dull room with all of these kind of like additions that you can do to it. Oh yeah. man, it'd be so epic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I think, you know, the future of VR will be with it, like productivity uh, and having multiple like virtual screens and being able to work in a virtual environment more effectively and efficiently than you can in a real one. And, and this really kind of gives you a little glimpse of what that future could be like when moving from a productivity stand to then going to something more entertainment, yeah. then doing something else like playing with a piano. It, it was just such a cool little tech demo and hats off to the, the original poster who I, I researched it, found out on YouTube is Greg Madison. And he stated that the, the demo was made using Unity and then played on the Oculus Quest. So hats off to Greg uh, Madison, because I, I don't think because it got kind of it went viral on Reddit, he kind of got lost in the credits. Uh, so, um, yeah, bless him for, for, for putting the work in and making this uh, incredible when experience. When I first saw it, my, my mind went like spinning immediately. You mentioned that you could have this kind of setup, but you could also like change like certain things. You could, for example, have like a, a house that is directly only for like work and productivity. And then with like the click of a button, like, like, like you know, Oculus Home, you change to your Oculus Home, uh, it would change into like an entertainment area or like a mm -hmm. relaxation area or like some or a sports area or whatever. Like you could do all of that because you have like the, the main foundations like uh, uh, fixed out, like, like yeah. ruled out. But then you can like add different kind of things for a specific kind of purpose. Yeah. And it got my mind thinking as well. And the way I envisage it is a bit more dystopian. Um, but if you imagine your house, like you don't need to decorate anything anymore. You don't need pictures on the wall. You don't, everything can just be white, for example. So you walk into this just white bland room, you put on your headset, everything's decorated in the colors and fabrics and materials that you want it to be in your virtual world. You never have to take your headset off and just or, live. Or, or even worse, there. even worse from now on, like Facebook will start selling houses and you can go in there and like put your virtual reality headset on. You have your Facebook house that you can like adjust you're just not allowed to touch or move any of the furniture yeah. and you can buy like premium you can buy like premium packages to skin the house um, <laughs> I, i'm taking this a step even further in mike's dystopian future where you've got like cyber pants that you know do the textures and stuff so you've, you're sitting on a cold slab but you think <laughs> it's like russian mink leather or something it's just like oh man but you know what i saw in that video i know nathan's not with us today but i think he would appreciate this is i saw the guy's shoes glint like the guy's got some pretty decent sneakers on in the middle of this video and um i think nathan would have appreciated that should he have been here <laughs> he would for sure he would for sure he'll be back with us next week uh, looking forward to hearing his his travel uh, stories you know in china he's been up to some really crazy stuff but yeah that is um that is a little uh, sort of video that i found this morning that i just thought was awesome had to share it with you guys so uh, yeah. i hope you like that one um next bit of news is about side quest actually it's going to be the last bit of news as well uh and this is uh for the oculus quest of course so we've uh well i've been an advocate of side quest for a while i don't know about you guys i know that sort of nathy is kind of a bit on the fence about it because he doesn't like that you have to sign up as a developer there's a few people it. yeah there's a few people who are um find that dodgy and off-putting i even get it in the comments you probably do as well in your in your yep. side quested project videos um 
I love it. I think I think it's the way forward. I think it's the Wild West. And I think it should be officially endorsed and actually purchased by... Uh, I think they should make an offer to the dev and say, support it, but we're going to buy your IP. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think it's a great idea. And I totally agree with your comment that it's the Wild West because, you know, the demos and experiences that are available on SciQuest are like tech demos or demos of future games that are going to be fully released or they're just games that didn't get approved by Oculus to be on the official Oculus store. And um, their top app actually on SciQuest was recently uh, downloaded half a million times. Um, so it's clear that people are enjoying uh, the content that's on offer with SideQuest, which is hang incredible. On, hang on, I, I just got to say one thing here. So they recently monetized, right? But I, that's got to be out of necessity because that level of download, whatever download services, you've got to pay for that bandwidth. Someone's paying for that bandwidth. It's probably the SideQuest team, I'd imagine. Yeah, I kind of got the impression, um, don't quote me on this, but I kind of got the impression when I spoke to the dev that because there was like not safe for work apps on there, that they were driving a lot of revenue through that potentially. Because um, didn't they just recently take that out though? Because that was one of the things that we said was a bit contentious recently. They, it, it's, it, it's still there, but it's still hidden. there, but hidden now. Yeah, you're right. It's still there, but hidden. Uh, huh. But I think that might be where uh, that might come from. But it, it like you say, be. they are. It could easily be. They would easily fund that. You know. But I think they are in discussions with Oculus about various bits and pieces. Um, but yeah, like like I said, their top app downloaded half a million times. You know, that's incredible. Um, it's super easy to install, and there's plenty of guides on YouTube, including one of my own, uh, if you need a helping hand to get it up and running. So I thought it'd be cool to kind of share the top 10 side quest games available right now, and this is by download numbers from their store. Um, so starting off at number 10 is ALVR, which is a, a cool tool to wirelessly stream PC VR content from your PC to your Quest. So it's like a wireless Oculus Link cable, although you really need a really solid 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection for it to work. Yeah. Um, so that's LVR, which is free. Uh, Pavlov Shack, which is one of Rowdy's uh, favorite games. You know, it's a, it's a little snippet, snack size sort of version of Pavlov, um, which will keep you busy until the full release on Quest. And it, again, it's free. So uh, am I, are you doing this in order? Yes. So starting from 10, working our way down, down to the most downloaded. Number one is Pavlov Shack now, just commented by the uh, side quest actually today. Oh, really? Yeah. It's wow. just it's just totally dominated went right to the top. But <laughs> sorry, cow. yeah, I was like I was expecting it to be at number two, but I'm like, yeah, they just I saw that before the podcast, so uh, that's Holy that's cow. our number one now. But sorry to interrupt okay. your list. <laughs> no, that's cool. That's cool. So, I, knew, I knew Rowdy would be happy to hear about Pavlov. Kind of throws it out of whack a little bit, but yeah. So Pavlov is now the number one. Um, number uh, seven, which will be now, is Your, which is the fitness app we're going to be talking about later on in the show. Cool. Um, number six is Quake. Quest, which is a port of the original Quake game. Wow, I'm now surprised. In VR. That's not easy because you have to put you have to put files on to make that thing even work. Yeah, it's it's, it's a little bit of work involved there. Yeah, because yeah. it's an open source mm -hmm. game now, uh, so you have to add the open source game to uh, to the files uh, for it to work. Uh, number five is Lambda One VR, which is a port of the original Half Life game. Same. It's a lot of fun to play in VR, especially swinging the crowbar around at those like head crabs. And brilliant. And multiplayer is very good. It, it's reminiscent of Team Fortress 2, and it had VR support originally. I.e., it's super fast. It's for people who have iron side legs uh, and VR legs. And if you're looking for something fast, running about with snarks in VR is hilarious fun. On, on a quick note, uh, the chat is I think correcting us. I think we by accident said uh, 500, uh, 500 million. Um, well, I'm saying half a million downloads. Half a million. Be a, uh, like there, people are saying that they thought it was fifty thousand times. It does. Let's see. I'll check it while you're going through the list, Mike. Okay. okay yeah. Sure. Just to clarify that. Yeah. Just make sure we get the facts right for sure. Right. Um, and number four is T for God. Uh, this is the game that uses Euclidean spaces that we've talked about on the show previously to kind of create the illusion of moving around a lot in game, uh, which is very clever. Definitely worth checking out. Number three is Day Sim, which is like a god sort of simulator in VR, um, which is kind of neat if you're into that kind of like tabletop looking down sort of a god mode sort of game. Uh, number two is um, Physics Playground, which is like a, a Boneworks clone, uh, which you can play around with. Um, actually, no, I've messed up the numbers here as well because it's thrown out of whack. <laughs> Sorry about this. Uh, the next one would be Virtual Desktop. Um, because that again, a bit like AR VR, you can yeah. sort of stream PC VR content to the Quest. Although this is a paid app, 
so you have to pay for this functionality. I got to take um, the narrow to a knee here, Mike. I was wrong. It was the highest rated app uh, oh, was Pavlov. So your numbers so you are actually right. So you threw out all my numbers. Okay. You confused the crap out of me for nothing. <laughs> Brilliant, thanks, Zim. Hold on, hold on. Both okay. of us might have made a mistake here. Yeah, so I messed up. I messed up the numbers with the half million. I think it's five. I think, I think it's like uh, fifty, <laughs> maybe fifty thousand. But double, double check. I'm checking. Um, so the number one downloaded app is Crisis Brigade, and this is one of my favorites. Actually, I made a video of this a little while ago. It's an awesome arcade shooter which plays very much like Time Crisis in my eyes. Uh, you're a cop. You have to sort of take down uh, jobs. The first one is a bank heist. It's really, really hard really hard but it's also a lot of fun and like i was like sweating buckets when i finally finished like the first mission but i was so happy uh so i definitely recommend a crisis brigade yeah fifty-two thousand one hundred and forty-six downloads Fifty thousand, not five hundred thousand. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> That's all right, because I was like a million, really. I, I remember when it was ten thousand. Um, so, yeah. So, so right now, at the moment, so live, live. Uh, so Pavlov Shack is at four point seven seven stars out of five, with eighteen thousand downloads. Crisis yeah. Frigate four point six seven with fifty two thousand. T for God has twenty six thousand downloads, rated at four point nine one, and Physics Playground is four point four two. That's kind of bone worksy uh, yeah. at thirty two thousand downloads. Nice, nice. Impressive, okay, though. cool. Impressive. So just to get the Especially numbers, because just, it's there's yeah. like like a few steps involved into getting it working on your side quest. Not everyone knows about it, so it's mm -hmm. more of like a niche kind of thing. Those numbers are still like very impressive, though. Yeah. I mean, I haven't even installed side quests, and I consider myself to be a fairly like a VR enthusiast. So, seriously, uh, not with Pavlov no. sitting there, dude. Oh, wow, dude. wow. So just to clarify the numbers, because I did mess them up a little bit. One is Crisis Brigade, two Virtual Desktop, three Physics Playground, four Day Sim, five T for God, six Lambda VR, seven Quake Quest, eight Ewer, nine Pavlov Shack, number 10 ALVR. Yeah. There you go. Oh. That is all the news this week. Uh-oh. Now, let me pass it over to Zim for the latest releases. <laughs> uh, this is the, uh, this is the fun, fun time. All right, so releases for everybody this week. Um, right, so um, first game. <laughs> this is awesome <laughs> i just gotta say i love steam for everything it feeds us on a regular basis um as featured in a number of uh spectator events shows things like that uh and i'll get this name right i'm gonna get this name right ayahuasca uh is a recent release on steam vr for 15 dollars about 10 pounds by Small Studio. It's a virtual reality film in which participants are immersed in visions triggered by a dose of ayahuasca. But what is ayahuasca? <laughs> it sounds like Alaska. Well, what is it? <laughs> I'm intrigued. It is succinctly described as a psychoactive brew. So typically, these tend to focus on the immediate effects that take place during an ayahuasca trip, some of which are enlightening, some of which are downright distressing. It's also known as the tea, the vine, and la purga. Or it's a brew. LSD. Or oh. LSD. <laughs> LSD by the leaves. <laughs> it's a brew made the leaves of the psychotria shrub, along with the stalks of the copy vine. And this is an Amazonian. Um, Historic, cultural, spiritual slash religious religious experience now brought to us as a cosmic journey for VR. Yeah. So I, I believe I believe that the developers of this game were actually taking this while they were making it. <laughs> I think it looks amazing. Honestly, as someone who's infatuated with like tool visuals and stuff, um, I love the look of this. It looks like they've put a lot of uh, spirit into it for the for our audio listeners. We saw flying snakes, all kinds of third eye type stuff <laughs> in the middle of the promo video. Um, and their little blurb about this is, the spectator lives this through the eyes of the director as he goes on a spiritual journey in the heart of the Amazon. And it looks like a proper trip. So if you've been reliant only on visualizers as of late, now you have essentially a drug trip in VR. So that's ayahuasca. Wow. Hidden gem. Mm. <laughs> I saw that what, one. What, what, what is this available on? So this is available on Steam VR. Steam VR. Okay. Yeah. So you should PC VR headset should be able to do it. I didn't see any notion of Windows Mixed Reality, but that's not rare. It may work there as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next one. 
Uh, this is one I think, if I'm not mistaken, Rowdy played recently. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. Did you play Shadow Legend VR recently, Rowdy? Not recently. I have I have played it before, though. What was the game you played? It was like, oh, it was Blade and Sorcery you played. Or today? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You yeah. Okay. Sorry, I got the two mixed up. They kind of got some similarities. So, action adventure title Shadow Legend VR is now releasing for PSVR. Uh, cost of this one is twenty five dollars, twenty pounds. Launching on the twenty first of January. Um, I ask you this: Can you pet the dog in Shadow Legend VR? You can. You can also feed the dog steak. The dog can also feed itself steak, as it did when I played this. And I was a bit miffed. So then I went and I instead fed the horse a carrot. <laughs> There's a lot you can do in this game. Um, I remember burning my hand after toasting some stuff in a, in a kiln in a fireplace trying to repair a sword. Picked up the sword and it burned my hand. Um, so they've got, they thought through a lot for this. And now it's landing on PSVR. So if your twitchy move controllers have been awaiting something that's rated mature for blood, violence, and usage of alcohol and tobacco, because you can smoke in the game, I believe, <laughs> um, then this is for you. Um, this so is a, the dog. What's that? And so can the dog. So can the dog. I don't think you can kill the dog. I was quite angry at it for eating my steak, but um, <laughs> I don't think you can, unfortunately. Shadow Legend VR is now landing uh, 21st of January. Just a couple of days for that one. So that's another one. I always like it when our PlayStation friends get something because they've had a kind of a slow roll for the mm. last couple of weeks, you know? Um, and that's that. things come in drip and drabs, but uh, there's plenty on PlayStation to research. There's, there's loads of weird Japanese stuff as well on there that if you are finding yourself wanting, I'd say uh, go look around for a couple of special titles. So back when I tried Shadow Legend, it was still a uh, still a bit buggy. I had the feeling, though. I mean, mm. it's been a while now, though, so I'm yeah. pretty sure that it's like been ironed out. But uh, I mean, they do a lot in that game, and I, I kind of had the feeling that maybe they were doing like too much, um, which yeah. is I mean, it's not a bad thing, of course. But... It felt like they were trying to take down like a Skyrim or something. That's that's what I felt when I first played it, yeah. and I would say it kind of felt like the first game that was a bit like down the same channel as like Asgard's Wrath. Like they got the combat in there. A lot of mm -hmm. RPG elements. As you said, lots of different mechanics kind of all thrown in. Yeah. I'd be interested to see what PlayStation, well, Sony's QA has done for that game. Has it come out as a polished gem now? Mm -hmm. I wonder. Yeah. Yeah, good so, point. Still to come. Two more. So, next one. We hinted about this one a little bit earlier. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is landing on the 23rd of January. Uh, now this is a full price game, so this is $40, 31 pounds, and um, yeah, you know, Grandma used to love making you cookies, but now Grandma wants her cookies back. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, Grandma's dead. <laughs> so, oh in this God. challenging single player game, um, where Grandma's not going to take no for an answer. <laughs> Saints and Sinners is unlike any other Walking Dead title before it. Um, you're going to get to fight the undead, scavenge, and make gut-rensing choices, kind of like the Telltale series, um, mm. where you actually make a difference to the game. Single player, we've seen a lot of visceral videos coming out. Nathan and Mike have put out from their early plays of the game as well. Some very interesting footage, I'm sure, similar to the trailers of Boneworks and other games like it that are physics-based. This has got people interested and an appetite for a bit of slaughter. So, uh, if you want to go and meet Grandma again, the dearly departed, Saints and Sinners, landing the 23rd from Skydance Interactive. I love that Grandma wants her cookie back. But <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, dead. They should yeah, that in the trailer. Grandma wants her cookies back. Yeah. This, this, this game you can you can have a you, you can play this for a long time you know yeah. you can have a lot of fun playing this uh, for a while and uh, I really liked the uh, the different branching sort of uh, conversation strings and story elements so uh, yeah I think a lot of people uh, are going to have fun with this title especially with the physics as well and it's just so brutal like I, I I couldn't believe how brutal it was but it was just so much fun it's actually it allows for way more than I was expecting it to yeah they, they did a cool job and for those who didn't hear before. <laughs> Uh, the Servios title, who are also developing a Walking Dead uh, IP title, has been pushed back. Do you remember uh, to when, Mike? I think it's Q2 or something like that. 
Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, and that one's called Onslaught. Onslaught, yeah. yeah. So that's coming out sometime later. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So another one uh, that we're getting, and I'm really happy about this because I just played this recently. Um, we've got Doctor Who, The Edge of Time landing on Oculus Quest of all things. Jesus, I didn't expect that. <laughs> It's a pretty good yeah, looking because game. I remember that when you when you played it, uh, you talked about it on the podcast, I believe, and yeah. you were like very impressed by like the, the graphical quality of that. And that yes. was really one of the things that was like really pushing it out there, like how like how realistic it looked and how good it looked. So it's impressive that they're that they're going to bring this over to the quest. Yeah, I can't I can't wait. Now, now for the visual uh, for the those watching the video, um, I'm I'm playing the PC trailer. I haven't found a quest trailer yet. 23rd of January. So if you're not into zombies, maybe you're into time travel. So mm -hmm. Doctor Who uh, puts you in the seat of the Doctor. And I can say from having played this one, um, you're in for a bit of a fright and a bit of a flight. It's it's actually got some great puzzle elements I found in the game. Um, I think it's really true to the uh, the actual IP of the television show. So if you're a fan, been watching it for quite some time, they do some great uh, voiceovers on it. Graphically, as I said, it's it's quite astounding. I'll be very interested to see how it looks on Quest. But to be honest with what we've seen from, from games like uh, Red Matter um, and others, Quest can do quite a bit, actually, if you treat it right, you know, so. And, and it's proper scary. And it's, mm. yeah, it's definitely, don't, don't go into this thinking it's all just sci-fi. It's definitely got some horror elements in there, so. Yeah, I think, I think for me, like um, the only thing that's been put me off playing this so far, because I love puzzle games in VR and I love scary things as well, um, is that I'm not a massive fan of Doctor Who. Mm. But I think despite that, I think I still, looking at the trailer again, I think I still really enjoy it, but it's just not been like high on my priority list. I'd recommend all. it, Mike. I'd recommend it because um, I'm also not a big Doctor Who fan. Well, mm. actually, I like the series. I bought first box set. I, I bought three series, or sorry, three sets, right? Um, so three seasons worth. I watched three episodes with my wife and she's like, we're not watching this. And then I held onto those box sets for like three years trying to like maybe work on her. Never worked, I had to give them away. So <laughs> that's as far as I got with Doctor I Who. The, I had the same, I had the same, like I, I think I watched like the first two episodes and I was like, nah, nah it's not for me. Yeah. So yeah. the game is solid though. It's really, really quite good. And it doesn't, you know, if you don't like, Doc, like Harry Potter and you play a Harry Potter game, you might be like, eh, I'm probably not gonna play that. It, you don't have to like the IP to like the like the game. Mm. So um, with that, one other little piece of news for those who like free stuff. Uh, this weekend, there is Until You Fall by Shell Games has a free weekend. This is quite a combative one, a good one for a sampler, I would say. This is a great type of game for a sampler weekend. Gives you just enough time to download it and take a half hour, two hour, 16 hour uh, run through the uh, run through the game. If you do 16 hours, please record it. I want to see you melt into a puddle of sweat. Um, but this one is is high action. It's uh, it's got timing elements in it as well. Colorful, great scene detail, uh, and combat that's been applauded by many of this cast. I uh, myself sadly have not played it yet. I'm oh, waiting. I'm waiting to do a little bit of an MR setup with it. But um, the sound, be yeah, because now it's got live support. Um, yeah, I wanted to try that. The, the soundtrack uh, is really, really great as well. Like, it gets you pumped for, like, swinging that sword around. Um, and, and the thing is, because it's roguelite, so you progress to the level. When you die, you, you get reset to the beginning. And when you first encounter your, that, that boss, I, I, I want to watch that stream because you will soil yourself without <laughs> question. Because you'll be like, all this work I've put into so far is about to go down the toilet. Um, but when you start getting better and better and more stronger and more powerful and you go back and face him and you finally take him down, it is so, so satisfying, so rewarding. So uh, definitely one to check out, especially if it's free this weekend, for sure. <laughs> exactly. There you go. And uh, timing on that. So it started yesterday. It's running through until midnight PST, that's Pacific Standard Time, Sunday night. So there nice, you go. Nice. Those are the yeah. upcoming releases that matter. And with that... Cool. We said we'd do a fun little side thing. Actually, do I yeah. even have? I think I do. So we're going to do now something a little special. For those of you who haven't already gotten your phones ready, please slide on over to slido.com. If you've got the app, pop open the app. I was going to say slide open the app. Yeah, there you go. Slide open the app on Slido. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a quiz. Three questions. If you don't get them right, don't worry. Uh, just, just give it a stab. This is one of those things you can't really give a wrong answer. 
Okay. Yeah, this is really cool. I, I really liked the interactive elements of like the kind of like uh, roundup of the the year. You know, our top games, and you got to ask us some questions, and the interactivity of it with you guys made it really really fun. Um, so what we thought it would be a great opportunity to do something fun like this again. So this little quiz uh, is going to be part of it. So um, yeah, download the Slido app, or you can check it out in your your browser, um, and just put F quiz as the room code, and you can get into it. And we can have some fun. Exactly. So I'm going to get that up on my side. We're going to get this going. So nice. uh, again, yeah, FQuest is all you need. Slido.com. You don't need to install the app or whatever. It's very helpful. Um, if you are the audio listeners, please uh, bear with us. But uh, this should be a little bit of fun for you too. Uh, once you're into the app as well, there is a Q&A tab and there's a poll tab. Okay. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be essentially using uh, the polls. So slide on over the polls. If you do want to ask a question for us to then... Um, be able to, uh, uh, for, for us then to be able to take your questions at the end of the show, we'll pick it up from there, uh, upvote the questions you want us to answer. Awesome. Okay, so with that, let me make sure we've got everything right on here that we're good to go. And I will go ahead and open poll number one. I will read the questions out as we post them. <laughs> and here we go. I'm this is always the this. tension part. You're like, what's, what's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? I'm, I'm looking forward to We know so not much. to trust him. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna lock. I'm gonna lock the poll. Uh, go ahead and show it. You should okay. See it now. Everyone's gonna Ooh. see it live as well. Here we go. So this Ooh. is the first question. What was the per eye resolution of the original Oculus Rift DK1 <laughs> headset? Okay. There's only There's one right answer for that. The thing is, <laughs> I, I think I know the answer, but I, the, there is an answer that says just blurry AF, which is probably the one <laughs> that I think is probably more suitable. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and unlock this, and you're going to be able to answer here now. We're going to leave the uh, results showing. Here, yeah. we, uh, here we go. So, okay, here we go. Ready, set, yeah. and go. I'm going to answer this one myself as well. And this is I'm per gonna... eye, of course. You've got to remember that. Yeah, yeah. indeed. Definitely. Um, okay, so I've submitted my answer. Per eye, so indeed. So you need to multiply the yeah the uh, the, hor the horizontal by two, right? <laughs> yeah. If you want to know the full resolution. That's right. That's right. I should probably have locked it for a little bit more because I'm just thinking now, like people could just cheat and just watch the thing. <laughs> 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 yeah. oh, I, I, I love the interactivity. Like I love w watching the polls. Like grow on screen i think it's like super interactive uh, so again apologies for the audio listeners uh, but this is the reason why you should come and join us live on the stream sometime it's a lot of fun yeah, Absolutely. We'll, we'll keep it entertaining for them as well yeah yeah so yeah. we're uh, <clears throat> uh we're 29 votes there in 30 now uh 50 success rate which is great so in the lead we have 640 by 800 which is the correct answer which is wow. when you think of it now 640 by 800 per eye yeah. That is horrible. That yeah. is just shocking. Um, so that's why the second answer is also the right answer, <laughs> which is blurry as fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the thing is, at the time, like because we had nothing to compare it to, it was just so revolutionary. You didn't care. You, you were just like, so amazed that this was even possible. And what we're going back, what, four or five years ago now. Yeah. But it was just so mind-blowing. And to be able to play Half-Life using that headset because like there was a mod available to do that yeah. back then using razor hydras which was the only thing you could use for motion tracking controllers back then um was just incredible you were living the dream back then it's actually what, six years I now found... it's six years old six years. yeah it's crazy isn't it the, the, the first experience that i had was actually i, w I was doing a, a science project on a, at the university and i had to like uh, I had to monitor certain rats during a behavioral experiment. But every time there was like a 30 minute wait in between like sessions. So it was 30 minutes. I literally just had to wait up until the rat was finished, finishing his behavioral experiment. <laughs> so what, what I had, like I had like this, like uh, this uh, Google phone. I had like a, like a Nexus back then, the Nexus four, I think it was uh, back then. Next four. And you, you could also install like because Google like Google Cardboard that came out as well. And it was like in the, in the beginning stages. It was before the Oculus Rift actually came out. And um, I installed like the Tuscany demo, uh, the side by side kind of thing uh, mm. on, on my phone. And just like looking at it like that and like, you yeah. know, like actually experiencing that already was for me like, 
amazing like just imagine like you know going going in there and like have that full like headset on there there was even no no there was they weren't even talking back then yet about like six dove or like you know oculus yeah. touch controllers yeah. and none of that it was just like having it on there looking around and seeing the tuscany demo and that was already like yeah whew. amazing amazing Tus Mad. tuscany was like the place to be in yeah. vr back then <laughs> <laughs> I, truth be told i always hated the tuscany demo i preferred the roller coaster um the tuscany one wasn't ever for me i never was smitten with that i love that enough. all right question two let's go ahead and activate this poll um cool. i'm gonna lock it actually first activate it so it comes up so this is what was the build name for nasa's 2010 Vertical takeoff and landing test vehicle, and also a code name of a popular VR headset. Ooh, this is great open. Question. So this is an open question, and we're gonna let the results pile in. Here we go, showing the results and unlocking. So I'll read them out as we start to get things drip fed in. You got to type these ones out. We this is what's called a word pile, and we're gonna see a word pile grow. The most popular answer uh, is gonna is gonna come out. We've got Quest, Crystal Cove landing fake landing oh if you put a space in i think it separates it i don't know why that is all right um x tall moon cosmos yeah uh, fake moon landing odyssey i know this one i know this Rift, one. cosmos <laughs> cosmos is taking it <laughs> orpheus these, these questions are great by the way the first one was really good as well but this one uh, i don't actually know the answer to so i'm intrigued what it yeah. is but uh, these are it, great it questions. was because the oculus headquarters was based near that kind of area so they would uh, they would pick mm. names from that place as well yeah well i love i love the uh, project names that come from uh, from oculus because they always pick uh, like place names and stuff like that and it's like yeah yeah so this is this is a bit of a tough one now these are getting harder by the way the third question's a real doozy we'll see if anyone gets it Right. Yeah. So we puffin. Where the fact did puffin come from? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I see Mike 200K in there as well. I'm pretty sure that was not it, though. <laughs> no clue. I like that. Crescent Bay. Right. So the actual answer for this one is, drumroll, right? Project Morpheus is actually oh, wow. the answer. Project wow. Morpheus was also the name of the VTOL program from NASA, uh, which is kind of interesting. Wow. I had no idea. I had no idea. So and he stole was... it. <laughs> yeah, and that was of course the code name for for the PS. What we know now as the PSVR. PSVR. Yeah, really, which really still cool. should have been called the Morpheus if if, if legal rights or whatever. But, the, would have been but this is the thing. Like I remember when um, we were talking about um, Quest. You know, because uh, what was it called uh, back then? It was called. Um, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Before, what was the project name of Quest? Santa uh, Cruz. Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz. And we yeah, were like, yeah. we we were like, I remember when the the, the name was unveiled, and we were like. <laughs> going to call this the quest we're always going to call it santa cruz but then we quickly forgot what it was uh, of yeah. course but i love how they're especially i remember being with the windlands team at oculus connect and um we were all trying to guess what the name was going to be for the device that was coming out like we knew mm. that the quest was coming we didn't know what it was and people were guessing like you know equivalent of like nike air it was like it's going to be the oculus air or it's going to be something else and then they came out with quest and it felt like the kind of a kind of a random word but to be honest as it's embedded in Great, great choice. Perfect name. Yeah, yeah perfect um, name. Which... Yeah, they've, they've also got some really cool other names like uh, Monterey Bay, Monterey Bay. Uh, Crystal Cove, um, you know. Uh, oh, what was the other one? I can't think of the other one now off the top of my head. But yeah, they've got some great code names. Uh, so that uh, that actually dovetails us in to the next and final question, uh, awesome. which is <laughs> what is the name for the Oculus logo? And um, this is going to be... Uh, Fun and yet difficult oh. one. I've actually mentioned this on the podcast before. If you're a keen yeah, you... Zim listener, you'll have heard this from me at least two or three times. Uh, for those who aren't, there you go. All right, results visible, unlocked. Give us your guesses. Yeah, Give I remember you guesses. telling me this, but now I can't remember for the life of me what it is. <laughs> donut. I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> the donut. I like how Blurry AF has entered every poll so Someone far. Someone just put Mike in there. <laughs> <laughs> What? The Oculus yeah. <laughs> Bobo. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I, lo I have to say, great job. For those of you who are there, you got it right. Stadium is the mm. answer of the Oculus logo. That no, shape. It's an oval. It's an oval. <laughs> the stadium. The Oculus Stadium. Confirmed the Oculus by, stadium. If, you, if you look at the, um, 
the iconography pack, the graphics pack for creators and press, the Oculus Stadium logo is named in those packages that you download. I thought, actually, to be honest, you remember the uh, original Oculus Eye and how it had like a really eye shape? Mm -hmm. I forget what it was yeah. called, Ocular or something. But the Oculus logo originally, man, I, I kicked a fit up when they changed that. I was like, this is a shit logo. <laughs> I just really didn't like it. Uh, but to be honest, I love the logo now. I think it was really well really well made. Yeah, it's very yeah, also, also, I don't think it's a good choice for Facebook to have a logo with that kind of eye on there. <laughs> Probably. No, yes, that's a very good point. I'll bet you that was brought up in a boardroom. Yeah, that's a good point. But it's, it's a great logo now, and it kind of reminds me of like that kind of Apple like design you know, philosophy of like minimalistic. It's just super clean. I like it. Yeah. They've honestly been copying Apple a, a lot of the way along, and why not? They're a hugely successful business. Anyway. I, I, uh, I do remember that... Um, when like Oculus wasn't that popular yet as a, as a brand, that whenever you typed in Oculus on like, for example, Twitter or like Instagram, whatever, like I would always get like pictures of like the stadium. I was like, what are all the stadium pictures like doing here? Like, you know, oh, I'm at the Oculus. I'm like, what do, what do you That's mean right, yeah. Oculus had cores? I had no idea back then that it came from There's that. a location called Oculus. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh. I can't remember what it is now, but it's like, it's, it's like a, a big building, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, a, it's, yeah. A, it's a place. Huh. Yeah. Did not know that. I will have to Google after this, and I probably won't get your source results. So maybe I'll have to search back in time and find them. Anyway, that's it for today's quiz. Thank you. Join us for a awesome. future month's F quiz. And uh, also, the questions that are put in there, we'll keep them for later on, and yeah. then we'll answer them as well. So if you're in the app, yeah, pop back to the Q and A tab and uh, upvote the questions you want us to answer. And we'll pick a couple of those at the end of the show. Yeah. That was a really good segment. I really enjoyed that. I think it's a lot of fun, and it's a great way for us to uh, to have a bit of fun with you guys and interact with you. So, uh, yeah, there's another great reason to come and join us live on the video show. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it if you're just listening anyway. Um, but let's get into a main topic this week, and that is about your. Uh, and this is an app uh, and that's, that sort of tracks your calories burnt when you're working out in VR. And it's actually spelled Y-U-R. Um, and... You know, this is great because like people have been using VR games uh, like Beat Saber, uh, Pistol Whip, Creed, Thr Thriller of the Fight uh, as like a kind of a fun workout. And the cool thing about you is that it's free and it adds a small overlay in your game so you can see this whilst you're playing, uh, which can show you your current stats, such as estimated calories burned, uh, how many squats you've done, and sort of tracks your leveling goals because you level up as a, as a kind of character as well, which is really cool. So maybe, you know, if you've got a New Year's resolution to do a bit more exercise, but it's still a bit dark and cold outside, you know, it certainly is here in the UK, and you just want to get a workout, you can do it inside and use this to track your calories in VR. This reminds me a lot of the Box VR fitness app, a yes. lot. And actually, this is what I was, you remember I was begging for this. I was basically saying, make your fitness pro regime, not just for your gym, that's in only two places in the world, but also bring it on the home environment. I'm so glad to hear this. I mean, initially I thought you were just gonna command us something in Russian, starting off with your, uh, but um, I'm glad that this has turned into now answering one of my dreams actually. And I, it's yeah. a very interesting interface. It's the first invasive interface that overlays on top of your existing game that I remember that I see. And this is available on SideQuest, right? It's available on SideQuest and are available on Steam as well for PC VR headsets. Nice. Um, and you talk about this like invasive overlay, and it's interesting that you sort of uh, highlight that and sort of spotted that straight away. And the reason probably why it's so good is because um, the developers of Your, uh, who are Dillian, uh, Dylan uh, Shah and Six Live, and you might recognize the name Six Live, Six Live yeah. uh, because he was one of the co-founders of Live, um, the mixed reality capture tool. So they've, they've got pedigree in, you know, working in VR and having sort of like messing around with the, the UI in, in, in VR. So that's why it's implemented so well and so, so neatly. Um, but you're right, you know, you can just play your VR game like Beat Saber, for example, and you'll just have this small little element in the corner that's showing you your estimated sort of tracked calories. Um, it's not, it's not it's, like 100% precise. Okay. And, and is there like a way to like 
add hard hardware to that because that's like my first kind of thing when i when i yeah. when i think about like fitness apps like i would like them to like you know like stand in that like hardware kind of sector yeah that. so so right now they're working on a, a proprietary algorithm to make it even more precise um that they're going to be rolling out in the near future but uh, like you mentioned rowdy they do have support for external uh, physical devices so you can add a bluetooth heart rate tracker and this is the the awesome thing which i'm really looking forward to trying is that it also is compatible with apple watch uh, and i know that zim's got an apple watch so it can track your heart rate and stuff like that um, <laughs> um, i don't use it anymore mike because uh, i'm looking to it sell is an it android i'm an android user now i'm oh, switched out of here you and your android voice <laughs> I, just, I was in the top uh, top two quadrants, you know, with Rowdy up here. He's a good looking guy. What can I say? He turned me into uh, an Android fella. So now I'm a with OnePlus. God, Nathy, I swear if you abandon me, that's it. This podcast is over. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. And it now your, it is integrated with uh, external hardware, so you can even have more precise uh, tracking of your calories burnt, which I think is awesome. And, and to make it even better is that when you're out of VR, they, they've made a, a, a mobile app so you can keep uh, track of your stats, uh, your calories burn, make sure you're hitting your fitness goals and stuff like that, give you notifications and reminders that you need to go and work out. Um, so I think it's it's a great way of legitimizing, you know, people working out in VR because it, people have been doing this for such a long time. And now with this tool that they can actually track it, it really incentivizes people to keep going back, mm. working out more, hitting their goals, yeah. leveling up. And um, they've got a great community over on their Discord, uh, encouraging each other, challenging each other as well to, to hit certain goals. Uh, so I think, you know, it's great uh, to make us VR nerds even more healthier in 2020. Uh, there's quite a few people asking in the chat, does it also support Fitbit? Um, so there oh. is a, a list of uh, supported hardware on the website. There's sort of like, I think it's like a Polar uh, heart tracker, uh, yeah. like the one yeah, that goes that across one. your chest, which I think is a popular one. And the the Apple Watch one stood out for me because I've got one. Um, but yeah, they're, they're all available uh, and listed in the FAQ section of the uh, your website. I'll take, um, I'll take a quick look too. Yeah, have a little look. Um, but like I said, you know, they've got this uh, Discord community where they're sort of encouraging people to go into the Discord, give them feedback because they're still sort of like developing this right now. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can request features and stuff like that, what you'd like to see in the so, future. The important so, thing here for me is how long will it take me to get to the max level on your it will take users a max uh, sorry a minimum of 90 days to reach max level so yeah. that's some that's serious outlay the thing is i see this and i immediately think because my wife does uh, a lot of beat saber and stuff like that for mm -hmm. fitness reasons to be able to tra traceability and the coolest thing about black box vr for me was the fact that you're building a character like yes. when you're working towards a goal and yeah. being able to upgrade i'd like I'd like to, I need to try this. I am going to definitely try this this week now because um, I, I had seen it before, but I was kind of like, ah, just batting it away. I, I didn't want to launch an app. I didn't know it was going to integrate with the app uh, yeah. that I wanted to use. That's great. Yeah. The, the and, thing is like, the only thing that they do is like heart rate monitors. So it's not like they take like, a, you know, for example, the gyroscope or like the accelerometer. No, from no your just your heart rate. Like yeah. But so that's I coming. Online, I found online the heart rate monitors that are supported by uh, YUR are uh, Polar, Apple Watch, the Heartbeat Hertz Frequency se Sensor, the Cospo uh, or the Cuspo, uh, the Wahoo Ticker, and the Garmin Ageron Dual. Yeah, yeah. And wow. I, I think that's just so cool. And like you said, uh, Zim, having that gamified um you know tracking of your calories is so important and it was one of the things that impressed me with box vr as well and i really hope because i haven't tried it out myself yet but i am planning to it's high on my list um is that you know you got a streak so like with with box vr they had a streak so if you didn't go within two or three days you lost that streak yeah. that gave you certain bonuses when playing the game Correct. so hopefully with your you've also got a streak that you can like follow in the app that incentivizes you, even if you don't want to work out, because let's be honest about it, there's many days out there that we don't want to work out, that it kind of forces you to do it because you don't want to lose that streak. And I think that's going to be something really important and hopefully they've implemented. It just seems, it seems like such a cool idea to have fitness tracking be pervasive. One of the things that I really appreciate in VR is solutions that cut across those boundaries, platforms, headsets, etc. I'd love to see them have a PSVR app at some point. Hopefully they're thinking and working on that because I'd love to have something that stat tracks me across all the VR I do. 
you know, mm. would work on the Go. This probably works on Go and Side Quest and now on desktop, which is good. That covers most of the platforms I use. Um, are there any known incompatibilities that are reported by them? I don't think it will work on Go um, because you're not moving around that much, I guess. That's a good point. Uh, uh, but yeah, definitely Quest and PC VR. Um, I guess I, I guess in the future, potentially, they could integrate with PSVR. I'm not sure oh. uh, if that's something that they could do in the future. But, you know, it, it's fairly new in terms of like a VR app. They did get a, a, a lot of funding. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's a great idea and I really wish them the best of luck. And that's kind of why I wanted to talk about it on the show, because although it's been out there since uh, December, not many people have talked about it or really shown it off on YouTube or really sort of like promoted it. And I think it is a really great idea. Uh, to incentivize uh, working out in VR. So I definitely want to share more about this in the future and probably do a video well, also, on, it on the channel. Also, just a little bit more information for people that are, because there's still some questions going on, uh, sure. is that, that OPCs do require a Bluetooth dongle for yep. in order to work. Uh, so your Bluetooth hardware monitor and, and dongle should support BLE. Um, yeah. So that's also something you need to keep in mind when you uh, when you try to get like, so maybe a Fitbit does work. I don't know if a Fitbit actually works with uh, connecting it to your PC through mm -hmm. uh, Bluetooth. Uh, but maybe it's yeah i guess it's, it's early days still as well you know there's plenty of room to uh, keep evolving keep improving adding more features uh, but i think it's a great start i think like uh, zim mentioned the ui uh, is discreet but looks really cool mm -hmm. and uh, the mobile app is really nice as well from what i've seen so far as well so uh, well worth checking out it's free on sidequest uh, and free on steam vr for all pc vr headsets so if you want to go and burn some calories in vr keep track of it definitely go and check out uh, your but do you guys um have you have you guys ever sort of like got into the routine of working out in VR regularly? I think the most I've ever done is like uh, you know before no there's two two things I've ever done and they both have, uh, are in relation to music games. That's uh, when Beat Saber come out came mm -hmm. out. I wanted to be on the on the top leaderboard you know before everyone started playing it. So of all the YouTubers, I want to be like you know on a hard mode at least. I want to be the number one. So I did for like three or four days like straight like six seven hours in Beat Saber and. Literally, I couldn't feel my legs after that. <laughs> I remember you said you were limping. I remember that. Oh, I, I literally like, at work, people were asking if I got into an accident because I couldn't walk up on the stairs anymore. I had to like <laughs> drag myself on the railing up. Uh, so that's one thing. And then the second thing was indeed again with, with Pistol Whip before it came out because I wanted to do like a special video recording like different kind of angles and like try to sh show it off like that. And I, I think I played like maybe six to eight hours uh, mm. every day for a total period of like five or six days uh just playing pistol whip and that like <sighs> okay i could like drench out my t-shirt like that like i feel a bottle of water i think yeah yeah i mean in terms of structured i've never done like a like a you know month-long like exercise saga type thing i mean generally the exercise things i've done are, are long stints like 16 hours standing and vring that type of stuff has done it but then again beat saber has to come out of the woodwork there there was one time i came back i think i came back from a work trip to poland and i'll be very frank i won't say anything too much but i stood in that room behind us Butt naked, played Beat Saber for four hours straight, beat everything on expert, went to bed after that. I was like, that was just that was my favorite Beat Saber session ever. It was really good to just let the air breathe. Yeah. <laughs> so you're a big advocate of playing Beat Saber completely naked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Never even considered it until now. Bring a fan. Like, bring a. No, like I don't mean like a fan from something. the audience, Mike. I mean bring a a fan that blows air at you. Oh right, you need the you need the, the, the circulating cool air as well. That's that's an integral part of this. So <laughs> hey, if you're gonna work hard, you I'm, better. I'm getting a mental picture that I really didn't want. Like you know, <laughs> yeah, just don't leave your webcam on by accident, Jesus. Yeah, that room's got a lot of cameras actually. So yeah, so there we go. That is the show this week. So uh, I guess we can answer some questions if anyone's asked any questions we in the a, app. We got a ton of questions, actually. Okay, cool. Um, so, so do you want me to do the little recap now? Do, and then we yeah, go questions? for the go for the recap. Okay, okay. so uh, just a reminder, this is a weekly VR, AR and MR talk show live streamed every Saturday on YouTube, Facebook and on Twitch. This is all made possible by using Restream.io. We use that to sort of push the video to all the different platforms at once, which is really cool. Couldn't do it without them. Uh, you can also catch the show in VR using big screen TV, of course, uh, and they host us on the Oculus app, which is really great. So you can get notifications of when we're going to go live. Watch it in VR with like-minded VR enthusiasts, which is a really cool way to watch the show. 
The show goes live at 7 p.m. in Europe, 6 p.m. in the UK, 12 midday in Central US. You can also check out the audio version, which Rowdy works really hard on to make sound epic. You can check that out on the iTunes store, uh, SoundCloud, and on Spotify. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Over to questions, so. so And I'll show them uh, as well, because we've got them all upvoted in that. Top question with six upvotes. How can access to multiplayer games, brackets LFG, be improved. Seems the community has made about a hundred, uh, sorry, a thousand small discords, which don't really help gathering large groups. That's a great question. Yeah, um, I know that. Good to answer as well. I know that Oculus were actively thinking about this, um, and that's why they integrated this chat feature into Oculus now on PC. So you'll notice on the desktop PC app, you've got a chat icon, mm. and they wanted uh, people to use that to communicate with each other on their friends list, to jump into games together. Mm. However, the best way that I've seen it integrated is exactly what we were talking about earlier, which was in Oculus Rooms, where you're already in VR together anyway as a group. You're chatting, catching up with your friends, and then you're like, hey, I've got Dead and Buried installed. Do you want to play it? And then it will show it showed you an icon of who had it installed out of your group. Mm. And then you can say, yeah, we've all got it installed. Let's jump into the game. And then a virtual character popped out of the screen, said, let's go into the game together. And then you were all teleported into the game together and into a lobby together straight away. Mm -hmm. It reduced all the friction of trying to set up a multiplayer game in VR, which if you've ever done before, you'll know is an absolute nightmare. Um, they also tried it through it... Oculus Home as well, right? So Oculus Home had that whole concept of have the console, throw the cartridge in, which... At the beginning, I thought it was kind of a cool idea because it's kind of like having a portal to the game that you can go in together. It, it, it ended up being a bit cumbersome, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and the code behind that's got to be quite complicated because you've got an API hook into any title who's going to support that. So I think the short answer is there isn't a great solution for it at the moment, but when it comes, I think it's going to have to come at platform level. But say, say, um, say like Facebook Horizon as an example, right? Say you right. boot up into the game world. Um, and it's just like a big like shopping mall space, for example. Loads of people milling about, talking with each other. Mm. And then the shops are games. So you've got Onward, Pavlov, and then you're like, right, I want to play this game. And then you sort of you walk to it, and then there's a group there, and then you group up there and go in. I don't too, know. Too physically restrictive, though, right? So okay. um, my, my thought of that is, right, like t today, think about a server browser. You're going... Uh, between different games, potentially. Back in the day, like GameSpy, you could go between multiple different games. Does anyone remember mm -hmm. GameSpy who's here? God, that ages me, doesn't yeah, it? I remember. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that they were shut down a couple of years ago, I think. Um, but you would be able to cross games. You would be able to catch servers and just dive into something. And I think that we need that ability, almost like we saw with that guy with the 50-50 who mapped his home, like scrolling along. You need the ability to be able to kind of flick between multiple realities. If you're going to have the physicality dimension that you're describing, some way to cross a great volume of data, like glean through it, kind of the same way you would through like a Tinder app or something like that, right? Like, how do I go through all of that, hook up with the people I want to hook up with, and then dive into a game? Like, that's the problem right now. There isn't a solution for that. But I, I don't uh, think, I think strictly physical, like VR chat, uh, Oculus Home, Steam VR Home, is the right way. It's too slow. It's too cumbersome. I, I personally think that the problem actually lays elsewhere, and that it's more related to what a developer does. Um, I think a lot of developers of multiplayer games launch their games way too early, um, mm -hmm. and that when groups, because you, you have that initial push, you know, you have the initial time that the game is available, then you have a peak of players that come on in. But if the content then is not good enough or doesn't grab the attention enough or there's just not enough content then what you will see is that those players will eventually leave and they'll never come back but you see other titles like for example vr chat like mm. pavlov like blade and sorcery like the i mean blade and sorcery is not a multiplayer game but it does that very well actually i'll talk about it next week um but it's it's so well done in terms of like that the way that content is managed and the way that more content is being produced by for example mods by for example new kind of levels new maps i think that kind of stuff is very important in order to keep an audience coming back to multiplayer games onward does that very well as well uh, I, I last played onward together with the lonely viper and the, and a couple of other people and holy heck have you guys played that that recently no 
it's not recently. so much improved um, mm. they have community right. maps uh, you have different kind of game modes in there now they have the, the best ai that i've seen in a game yet you know when you put pavlov on like the hardest on the ai mm. yeah. it's still fairly easy to kill them um with with Pav with with Honor, what they've done is they have like sort of like a wave mode where you need to survive just as long as you can. They have, they keep on like enemies coming. <laughs> it was me together with Lonely Viper, another professional player, and literally we couldn't we couldn't finish it on, on and it wasn't even on the hardest mode yet. Wow. And you really have to be tactical, moving rooms, you know, flanking. It was awesome how they've done that, and it's just with AI. And I keep on telling that to like multiplayer VR developers. Mm -hmm. If you don't have enough people playing your game, get some AI in there. It doesn't have to be good yet, but make sure there's something in there. Because if you go into a multiplayer game uh, and, and you go into a level and there's literally no one playing and there's no AI, you, you can't play the game. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah that's definitely, I, I have to agree with you, Rowdy. I've seen several in the last two years where title comes out, first two weeks are buzzing, then it goes into fade out and it's like, I just want to play. I just want to play around, get better, whatever. Yeah. And if they don't have a single player mode, it's you're just brick wall. You're brick walling it. And so I have to yeah. agree with your point there. Um, cool. Let's take the next question maybe, if you guys sure. are all right there. Yeah, yeah, take a couple. Um, oh, right, this one's for me. Uh, did Zim get his website up with all the VR tips and tricks? Uh, the short answer is it's not, well, it's up, but it's not, all the articles aren't published yet or the guides aren't published yet. That's at zimtalk5.com slash VR if you want to be ready. Should be putting up my quest thing within the next week. Uh, nice. The last one, favorite VR adaptation of a pancake game? Easy. For me. Go on. No Man's Sky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Great, great example. Great example because there hasn't been that many good ones. I think that's the key. And Do not no say Skyrim, Zim. <laughs> you know what's yeah, my I know, answer. I know he's, he's going to say that. I, I can't. Say that. Th there is not another VR game. <laughs> Left for Dead. Left for Dead. <laughs> There's not another VR game that's been so beautifully converted. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, they're, they're, they're two great examples, two great examples. But I think No Man's Sky uh, is the winner in my eyes just because they did a lot more stuff beyond just UI and everything else yeah. to make that game a completely new game when you play it in VR. It's, it's Ooh, so well in Did you guys oh, have a good one in chat, but, though, with Darshan Shankar well, says uh, super hot. Super hot is another one. Uh, did That's you guys true. see the, um, like mockumentary documentary of, of what happened to No Man's Sky. It's really good. There was a great YouTube video. It's about 40 minutes long. Mm -hmm. Goes through the entire Sean Murray thing from start to finish, both the public side, then his side. Very engaging documentary. Uh, it was published on YouTube about a week ago, I think. I would, okay, cool. I should link that in the comments or yeah, whatever. Because I know they had a rough time as a development studio. Um, yeah, they did. Because the game got heavily criticized on release because it was hyped beyond belief by sony as one of their flagship launch titles um there's been so, yeah. quite a few big ones actually uh like indeed you have like microphone microsoft flight simulator but also like fallout 4 has been in there mm. la noir yeah. is yeah. uh is one of them as but well it's interesting that someone mentioned super hot because i don't even think of super hot as a traditional pancake game oh, I've hellblade never, I've, I've never played the traditional pancake game. But I mean, its, its origins are in—it's—it's it's not a VR port, of yeah. course, but it's a—it's uh, it's, uh, yeah, it came from that oh, for sure. Oh, oh, Alien Isolation, Hellblade. Um, I actually a lot of people are like mixed opinions about Fallout Four. By the time I got to it, which was about a month after release, like properly playing it, I really liked it. Um, mm. It was just too when you play one Bethesda title and then another, you kind of go like. This is the same thing in a different skin. And yeah. So I na and I, I generally like the kind of old timey Skyrim vibe a lot better than the you know new age Fallout thing. Um, so I just ended up playing Skyrim a heck of a lot more. But I did about 20, 30 hours in Fallout, and I I found it to be totally fine. I I think if you can pick it up for twelve, fifteen quid or something, it's still a very solid offering. And a lot of people don't hear about it. I don't. I haven't heard people playing it recently at all but hellblade no. is another one that holy cow that's a that's an amazing game uh alien isolation is another amazing game i mean there's a lot of mm. pancake titles that are well worth playing in vr i really hope that ninja theory the developers behind uh, hellblade incorporate a vr mode into their new hellblade game uh which is going to be coming out i think end of this year uh, i think that'd be super smart for, of them because it, it it was received really well by the vr community uh, to add that support. So hard though, right? I mean, they were, the studio has been bought up by Microsoft, right? 
right so maybe that won't be the case you think yeah that's why we were saying around the game awards that like it's just not gonna happen and mm. i am literally i mean i'm not crying as hard as i was for left for dead let's be true and i'm still not giving up hope i hope this is just like they're just throwing us off the meat course because i know left for dead vr is happening valve i know it's happening anyway <laughs> someone mentioned in the chat your favorite aseto corsa aseto corsa is a great point um like i started playing that and then within three months of starting playing it six years ago um well what can i say i, I play it regularly um and i'm still running a whole ton of servers and that, that game is great i mean i saw a great uh question in, in on twitter recently and i answered a set of course of that which was if you had to be in i think it was oculus gaming sent this out mm -hmm. if you had to be in vr for a week what game would you choose and mm. for me, it would be Assetto because the social dimension, the fact that it's fast paced, the fact that it's skill based and you can benefit from that week. Um, that's why I would choose that. What would, what would you guys spend a week in VR in if you had to pick one thing? Do you want to go first, Radio? Do you want me to go first? No, go ahead. I'm, I'm still thinking. I, I think right now, having played it again just recently, um, is probably Asgard's Wrath, just because I know that I enjoy that game more than I enjoy Skyrim. So and it's probably similar. I, I understand, um, but having played but it again, I mean just... that you have to spend like you know an entire week with uh, a talking shark called yeah, Steve. Yeah, but at least you got me. You know what I mean? Like at least you're not on your own. You got a bird. You got a shark. You got a turtle. What more do you want? Like Jesus. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoy that game, and I just wish I had more time to play it to completion. I'm on the second character now, thankfully. Yeah. Um, but I just I just love that game. Whenever it's... I get a chance to play it, I always. I always do the quality, um, right? Yeah, it's like for me. For me, it will be Pavlov. Um, again, social aspect. You can do so much more in that game than just blow each other's brains out. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Free, tomorrow, I, free tomorrow, like, Roddy. Can... We're doing a Pavlov night. Actually, <laughs> yeah. you do. You were there at the last one. We're doing that for our social Sunday tomorrow. Okay, so. maybe maybe I will. I have to see if my if my girlfriend is up for it. <laughs> Is she gonna jump in too? <laughs> no. <laughs> we can all wish, right? So that was um, it. Those were the top three uh, questions, anyway. Um, the forest, I suppose, is another good one that was originally pancaked. The people are mentioning in chat. Yeah. Uh, Minecraft. Yep. Again. Minecraft. I, yeah. I probably should have mentioned that. The only update on Minecraft, I'm gonna say, you guys know I did the whole jumping in Minecraft mm. thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my knees have been wrecked for about a month because uh, oh, wow. I did that three nights in a row where I was jumping to jump every single block for about yeah. three hour streams, three nights in a row. And my knees have not felt right for a month. So I am not going to probably do that again. I'm maybe beyond the age barrier that that is sane. I would love to be on a, a fly on the wall at your doctor's surgery trying to explain to your doctor how you, you got this injury to your knees. Oh. <laughs> I, I should know should... better. It's bad in my genetics. I had a cousin who playing softball in the US, jumped, landed, both uh, the connection between the patella and the bottom snapped on both of his oh. legs. So, so that's so wait, a long injury. So wait, you've got yeah. a family history of knees made of glass and yet you still play this game this way. <laughs> you like to live on the edge, what can okay. I say? VR is great. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. this has been a fantastic like mix up episode. Uh, I'm looking forward to hear what Nathie's got back from China. He seems to have been yeah. incredibly busy over there. Yeah. Uh, not only photo shoots, uh, but also like he's, he's he's covering a lot. They did a yeah. good job planning that because that's not easy to pull off. Yeah, that's that's what the benefit of having a brother that's your manager. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you get everything planned for you, which is amazing. Applause, applause David does an amazing amazing job. He does. Um, but yeah, looking forward definitely to hearing about his exploits in uh, China next week. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Thank you for those that have joined us live this week and got involved with the quiz as well uh, that Zim set up. I thought that was a lot of fun. We've covered loads of topics this week. We've covered your uh, Oculus Quest, uh, Oculus Go, sorry, having a permanent uh, price drop. Iron Man delayed. Uh, Left for Dead, sadly, uh, confirmed it's not going to happen. Poor Zim, he's going to cry himself to sleep tonight. <laughs> Um, so it's been an amazing show. Thank you again for joining us live. We really appreciate it. We'll be back next week as always. So have a great week in VR. Until then, take care and bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. See you later. See you. Bye.